Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is an analysis of In Cardigan Market by Brian Morris and R.S. Thomas's A Peasant. I'm going to go through In Cardigan Market first. Um, I'm going to firstly read it just so it's in everyone's mind. Go through it bit by bit. Um, I'm going to make comments that refer to uh, what the poem is about, uh, the message, the mood and atmosphere, particular words and phrases, and um, personal response. But I'm not necessarily going to do it in that order, okay? So just be aware of that. The key thing is we're going through this so it's consolidating and recapping what we've already done in lessons. Um, it's up to you really then to, to make those links, even though I will make some links as well as we go along. Okay, so in Cardigan Market, let's just have a quick read of it. Auntie Jane Fish, they call her. She's rough, raw-boned, fat, toothless, 15 stone of grin and grumble. Her voice cuts the market din like a sore on a nail. She stinks enough of fish to change the colour of the light. Her phosphorescent flesh's steaming glow drips female sweat and friendship. Traders know men come from miles and buy from morn till night. Daily she sells the princely salmon, trout, the vulgar herring and the vicious eel with ancient eyes. Lobsters black from the creel, all fresh, all caught before the stars went out. All day she squats here, nodding her big head, richly alive among the silvery dead. Okay, so in Cardigan Market, um, essentially what it's about, it's about a strong character, isn't it? This Auntie Jane Fish. Um, she lives almost wedded to her job, doesn't she? Her job is who she is. She is a market seller. She sells fish. She's a, a fishmonger or fish seller. That's who she is. Um, hence, like it, her name is tied to her, isn't it, very closely, Auntie Jane Fish. Okay, so looking at the, the title first, In Cardigan Market, why is it important? So straight away, it sort of fixes the place in our minds, isn't it, in the reader's minds. Um, to emphasize the importance of the marketplace. I mean, this is a central place in her life. It's part of who she is. She lives and breathes this market every day selling fish. Um, it's in Cardigan. It's a Welsh coastal town, as we discussed. It's known for being sort of a working, busy fishing town. And the market um, is still seen as, as more traditional than sort of perhaps the modern day market, like or just your shops on the high street, your sort of chain stores, um, Debenhams, um, Specsavers, all the ones you sort of expect to see um, going down the high street. The interesting, that word in, the preposition at the start of that title, in Cardigan Market, sort of emphasizes being at the heart um, of this sort of busy um, atmosphere and busy nature of the market, that she really is like the heart of this marketplace. And there's like your language analysis then, like where you pick out particular words and phrases, you sort of zoom in and talk about that effect, yeah? Um, okay, so um, first line, anti-Jane Fish. So straight away, um, think about what's the importance of her name. I mean, firstly, her name is the first, the first words of the poem, the very first words that, um, are her name. Um, her identity is identity is massively important. It's central, sort of central to the life of the market um, and how people sort of view her or perceive her. Um, that she's this fish seller. The fact that she's called Auntie is interesting, isn't it? And what does that suggest about her character? Like Auntie is a very sort of um, familial sort of term, isn't it? Um, we associate it with family almost. When you think of your your Auntie, even though the people aren't your family. The people that are sort of close to your parents, the people that um, sort of rely on you trusting. Um, so it's almost like people feel close to her. They're almost like family, that she is like family to them. It's a term of affection, isn't it? It's sort of well known, really, to then go that she is well known. People see her so often, so regularly, that she's become part of their daily lives. Um, the fact that she's Auntie Jane Fish, to emphasize her trade, um, that she's well known for her trade. She's synonymous with, synonymous with it, as in she's, she's directly linked with that trade. It says, Auntie Jane Fish, they call her. And who are they? Well, thinking who they are, it's the public, isn't it? It's the people that go and buy the fish from her. And you've got to ask yourself there, is it sort of positive or negative, like they call her? I personally wouldn't like to be called um, Mr. Novacic, the fish, um, or Mr. Novacic fish. 
it would be a bit weird anyway but um that would sort of be negative to me but i'm thinking again as we talked this sort of idea almost viewed on the one hand that it's um it's almost a sense of endearment of intimacy that they view almost like a family member um but on the other hand you could argue that perhaps this is how they pigeonhole her they only see her not as it a human being so much but as just a seller um someone who just who who basically just offers a product to them which is kind of strips away a bit of her humanity a bit doesn't it that they don't see her as an entirely complete person and human being now what i'm doing there just showing there's different interpretations and that's what they like to see really examiners like to see that you can like suggest with poetry that there are different interpretations okay so we got this sort of closeness now we could then got that it says she is rough and that's interesting because perhaps does it refer to a class that she's got these humble roots um that she comes from like a working class background in terms of being a market seller the first thing i'm thinking about that is that there's no pretensions behind her she's not trying to be more than she is she's a salt of the earth person she's a very genuine person what you see is sort of what you get with her she is just very open and honest in how she is she is just this fish seller and that's how people know her she's she doesn't try to deceive people she's a very honest she's sort of, sort of trustworthy but then you've got these sort of like these adjectives then raw boned fat toothless and a raw boned is like this idea um of being sort of bony and sort of gaunt physique like almost not a lot of, of sort of flesh on you but then you've got this all contrasted with fat so she's kind of an unusual character isn't it that she's quite striking as a character like you can't help but but drawn to her just to look at her she sort of catches your eye and um, the fact that she's toothless um she, she she stands out doesn't she she's very recognizable um she's a real character 15 stone of grin i mean even when you've got that sort of grin um there's like a warmth there isn't there um that sort of grin but then you've got it then the next line and the fact it goes from that line to the next line is it's called enjambement, enjambement or run on line as in when it continues to the next line doesn't finish there with a full stop it goes on the next line and grumble so you've got this quite a contrast that on one hand she's she's got this grin there's this laughter smile smiley and then grumble maybe she's a bit grumpy yeah so you've got this perhaps quite temperamental you've got this person that sort of ve like veers and sort of goes between extremes so quite temperamental but it makes her seem quite, um, what well, I say, quite a character, but also what we say a caricature in the sense that she's not quite a person, almost like a cartoon character um, with a particular personality that goes from one thing to another. Um, it's it's not really much gray in the middle. She's either black or she's white, really, you know. Um, there's no sort of, like I said, areas of gray. Um, and I wonder anyway, just going back to she is rough, maybe this sort of reflects just the effect of her constant working that is it's it's sort of worn her over time isn't it um it's almost it's had a physical effect on her it's like worn her down um it's almost like being weathered like rock we could see that as well when we talk a little bit more in a bit of a peasant where iago is is you could say is worn down well he's perhaps you could say the idea that he's worn down by the the harsh nature of the elements he lives in but but that he he's constantly battered um and assaulted by the environment he lives in um it takes you could say it takes a toll we can see it in his description of his appearances his mannerisms his manners okay so back to um to in cardio market so in green and Grum, uh, grumble the third line her voice cuts the market din um her voice cuts you know those sort of people's voices they're that just really go through you you just can't ignore them so again she's quite difficult to ignore and like cuts um it's quite aggressive in some ways isn't it um this sort of this very sort of um aggressive quite forceful um sort of verb there cuts you can't ignore her it's, it's very difficult to ignore and the cuts through the market din as in cuts through the noise of the crowd like a sore on a nail like it's almost quite irritating isn't it like it, that sort of very um almost unpleasant sound very grating very irritating sounds like a rough sound isn't it sore on a nail um but we could say what comes across there is her authority that you can't help her but notice her she makes herself puts herself out there to be noticed um so yeah moving on i guess 
again, it it sort of pushes this even further with, um, and obviously that was a simile there. And what we did, we talked about the effect of the simile. We didn't just say it's a simile. We sort of took it a bit further and said what the effect of it was. She stinks enough a fish to change the color of the light. Okay, so the fact that she's always in the market, she's constantly around fish. God, it would make you smell a bit whiffy, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> and so she's almost taken on this this smell. It's almost like it's been she's been saturated in it, like soaked in the smell of um, of fish. Um, almost so much, it's like exaggerated that she can change the light around her. Okay, it's almost like this this aura around her, almost like a an angel with their, their like halo or an aura with that glow around her. It's the, the the pungent smell of this fish. It's like who she is radiates out. Um, but this idea that she's totally immersed in her profession, that's who she is. We then got the next line. What line are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth line, her phosphorescent flesh is steaming glow, drips female sweat and friendship. Do you notice that as I read that, that's my unit of sense. Um, and by unit of sense, I read from where I imagine the scent, if it was a sentence of um, this poem, in this poem, it would start there and end with the full stop. It like makes sense, that part, doesn't it? Even if it wasn't a full stop there, it feels like it's a full sentence. Now, we know that not all poems are written as full sentences. Um, so you've got to sort of decide where the sentence would begin and where it would end. Just so it's easier to make sense of, really. Okay, so the phosphorescent flesh is steaming glow. I mean, you think phosphorescent is that like phosphorus is like this glow, isn't it? If you add in, in chemistry, it sort of lights up um, and it's sort of shiny, isn't it? Um, phosphorescent is almost like it's almost like she's become like a fish. It's like a fish's scales where it catches the light, it reflects the light in this glow. Um, and it's interesting because you could say it's quite comical. Again, it's quite exaggerated or a fancy or more sophisticated word for exaggerated. It uses hyperbole. Um, hyper bowl, if you want to remember it like that, H Y P E R B O L E. Um, it's like she totally owns the space to the extent that 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 she's almost glowing. Um, yeah, she almost glows, almost like one of those anglerfish where their scales glow. She draws people in, doesn't she? Almost like like her prey. Um, but I don't think it's it's seen as something which is is a particularly negative thing or a threatening thing here. It's almost like a friendly sort of drawing in your, the customers are almost the prey to her and she's the, the predator to sell them her sort of, her ways, her, um, her product, her fish. It says that she drips female sweat and friendship. This is why it's, it's backed up, this more positive. She drips female sweat. Now that doesn't sound very pleasant, that image, is it? Like dripping female sweat, like being really sweaty Betty sort of thing. Nah, not quite. It's more, I think, when you drip sweat, it's because you're trying really hard. It's, you're making a really, really solid effort. Um, you're really hard working. Um, and with the fact that she's dripping female sweat, it's coming off her so much that this this female sweat and friendship, she's so hard working in terms of hard working to sort of gain friends, to bring friends to her, um, that, again, it's almost that like you can see the type of character she is in her appearance on the outside all the time and maybe you could say that's a bit different to Iago because there's something but much quieter about him as a person a lot more solitude a lot more solitary it's much harder to see what's going on inside his head um but you can tell a lot about um and you could say that rs thomas the poet in a peasant is maybe a bit critical of that it's quite difficult to, to judge his character whereas almost we can see it through her appearance in um in cardigan market with with Auntie Jane Fish. Um, okay, so moving on then. Traders know men come from miles and buy from morn till night. Well, look there. The, the funny thing is, as much as she's apparently drips female sweat, which doesn't seem particularly appealing, the fact that she almost glows like this angler fish um, and changes the color of the light because she smells so pungently as fish, yet men come from miles around to buy her fish. So... The irony is, like, we don't almost, it's an expected sort of outcome of this, um, is that she actually attracts men, yeah? And what does this tell us about her? I mean, you've got to go deeper, go for deeper layers of meaning there. You've got to dig down and drill down to the deeper layers, um, what we say beyond the surface means. So what, 
what's the effect of that? What do we learn a bit more? Push it. Remember the five W's. 